The Silk Road helped to develop a unique Azerbaijani characteristic, a fusion of hospitality and tolerance towards people of other races and religions. Jews first settled in the hospitable land of Azerbaijan in the 5th century BC, seeking refuge from the destruction of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Jews found peace and sanctuary here. They prospered, able to preserve their religion, culture, and identity for future generations. At the end of the 17th century, Fatali Khan of Guba granted Jews land to establish a major settlement near the main city of the Guba chiefdom in northeastern Azerbaijan. It was given the name the Red Village because of the color of its roofs. This settlement brought together Jewish people from all over Azerbaijan, as well as neighboring Iran and Dagestan. Today, the Red Village is considered the biggest compact settlement of Jews living in diaspora. It's gained unique prominence as a country with zero anti-Semitism. The first Christians came to Azerbaijan as early as in the first century AC. According to the medieval historian of the Caucasian Albania, Moses of Kalankatuik, Saint Eliseus, a disciple of Saint Thaddeus of Edessa, arrived in Gis, a town in the Caucasian Albania, the ancient predecessor of modern Azerbaijan. Here, as the annals of history says, he built the first church in the Caucasus, and three centuries later, Christianity was accepted as the state religion of the kingdom of the Caucasian Albania. Azerbaijanis preserved this ancient church, which is in the modern-day village of Kish, in the northwestern region of Shaki. Even after 2,000 years, this temple still receives a stream of pilgrims from all over the Caucasus. Another eight... See, um, I am a Muslim, and I'm very proud of our Muslim heritage. Azerbaijan is a majority Muslim country. 95% of Azerbaijan population are um, Muslims, primarily Shiites, but also a Sunni minority as well. So this is where Azerbaijan is located. Um, you see this is a, a the largest lake in the world, so we are practically uh, landlocked, so we don't have access to the rural oceans, it's only through Russia or Georgia. And Azerbaijan is the only country in the world that borders both Russia and Iran, right in between. But, <laughs> But we have also learned to, ch to turn challenge these challenges into opportunities. Uh, it's a new country, a republic actually, since 28 years of independence, since 1991, since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, and this is where some information. It's the size of the state of Maine or the country of Austria, and around 10 million people, capital is Baku. So independence is 1991. But this is our second independence. The first Republic of Azerbaijan was established actually in 1918, which became the first secular democracy, secular republic in the entire Muslim world in 1918. And the same year, 101 years ago, the, this republic, Azerbaijan, was, became the first in the Muslim world to grant voting rights to women. <laughs> 71 years, a lot of oppression, no freedom of religion, no freedom of thought, and so a lot of house of worship were confiscated, destroyed, turned into storages, etc. But when we became independent in 1991, we returned all those confiscated religious property to their owners, to Christian communities, to Jewish communities, and to others. Because as we had the secularism as a principle, strong principle of our statehood in the beginning, we continued it as a new republic, a second republic, and we even strengthened it. So there is a, a huge advantage in Azerbaijan. It's a lot, lot of centuries-long traditions of multi-faith uh, coexistence and respect for the land, land of interreligious harmony, um, uh, where the majority of Muslim population gets along very well with the Jewish community, with the Christian community, with Baha'is, even Zoroastrians and Christians. And all of these communities are registered by the state. Uh, they have state registration, they can freely practice their religion without any 
uh, hindrances. Um, I show you this picture. This is a fire temple in the vicinity of Bakus, and I hope some of you will visit Azerbaijan after this presentation, hopefully. This is a, one of the destinations you have to go. It's a, right at Baku. It's a 500-year-old temple, fire temple, built by Zoroastrians so 500 years ago in Baku, surrounded by Muslim neighborhoods. So if, if you consider that in Islam, uh, fire worshiping is not seen well or heretical, consider that the fact that 500 years ago, the Zoroastrian mosque in Azerbaijan, it's called Hader Mosque in Baku, it's a relatively new mosque, but not only it's very beautiful like, uh, in, in, in physically, but the most important view of it is that here, every Friday, Sunnis and Shias come together and pray together. Around three, four thousand of them. And Imams, Sunni and Shia Imams, rotate. So they, they, they listen to different Imams, Sunni or Shia Imams, every Friday. Uh, but if you consider what's going on in the wider region among Sunnis and Shias, uh, I think it's a remarkable experience and we, we want to inspire the, uh, our ancestral state called Caucasian Albania. So you see the Russian Orthodox Cathedral in Baku which was renovated uh, with the help of Azerbaijan government as well and also some Muslim uh, philanthropists, a Catholic church, a quite new one, uh, relatively new I would say. Pope John Paul II was there to lay its foundation and the uh, ground for this church was donated by the government of Azerbaijan to build it. And Pope Francis was there to give him um, service as, as a few years ago. I showed a picture of it as well. A Lutheran German church. We had a large German community in Azerbaijan until Stalin exiled them, all of them to Kazakhstan and other Central Asian republics when Adolf Hitler was about to invade Azerbaijan. Thank you, it didn't happen. So it, the Stalingrad battle stopped Hitler, but Stalin was concerned that this German community was collaborating with Hitler, so we lost our German community, but, so, but they have churches still are today. Armenian church, um, that was mentioned, uh, still in downtown Baku, with uh, 5,000 ancient Armenian um, books still there, preserved under the protection of, of government of Azerbaijan. And Azerbaijan is there, and also to over 20 churches in France, uh, Greece, Bulgaria, so we try to contribute to that as well. Here Pope Francis uh, with President Ilham Aliyev when he visited Azerbaijan, here with, with the kids at the, at the Catholic Church. We have around 1,000 Catholics in Azerbaijan. The question was asked by the reporters, why are you going to Azerbaijan? There are just 1,000 Catholics, or there are so many Catholic countries and Christian countries you can visit. He said, this is a small country, but it's making difference. It's a verbatim said, this is a country with diversity, there's a respect for diversity, for um, harmony among religions. That's my message to all of us today is that peace among religions is possible. And Azerbaijan, with its example, shows the possibility of this peace and harmony among religions, not only among religions, even within religions as well.